Hmm, interesting. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just reading up on a psychologist. I'm sure you've all heard of John Brodus Watson. After all, he was the founder of the school of thought called behaviorism. Before we begin on that, let's back it up to where it all began. John was born on a farm in Traveler's Rest, Southern California in 1878. He was born into a poor family being the fourth of six children. Emma Watson, his father, was a hardcore religious Baptist. She named him after a Baptist minister hoping that he would one day grow up to become one too. Instead, Watson developed a distaste for religion and became an atheist. His father, Pickens Butler Watson, was an alcoholic. I could really go for a drink. Another one! You know what? <clears throat> Who had affairs and eventually abandoned his family for another woman when John was only 13. His family was poor because his father didn't last at jobs. John resented him and yet ironically he ended up doing the same things his father did. John's mother wanted to provide her children with better opportunities. This led them to move to Greenville, Southern California, where he was able to meet diverse people. Watson was a lousy student and performed poorly in school. He was lazy and disobedient. Here's actual footage. This is so stupid. Ah, oh, stupid. He also didn't enjoy the transition from farm to city. He was frequently bullied at school and kids labeled him as a dumb country kid. His frustrations turned him to delinquency and hate crime. Watson got arrested twice for fist fighting, shooting a gun within the city limits, and for his attacks on local black people. What is going on here? Oh, um, well you see, who do you think you are? Regardless, John was able to enroll at Furman University in Greenville at the age of 16, thanks to his mother's influence with the local Baptist church. The plan was for him to become a minister and enter Princeton Theological Seminary after graduating as promised to his mother. He was an indifferent student and his academic record as an undergraduate was not impressive. He managed to pass his Greek and Latin final exams in his senior year by getting high off of cocaine. Regardless, he was smart and talented, enough to earn his master's degree by the age of 21. Here's his graduation. He just liked doing things in his own way and thought too highly of himself. Watson's mother died in 1899, freeing him from his promise and having no reason to stick around and he moved to Illinois. There he attended the University of Chicago initially pursuing philosophy. He became uninterested in philosophy and found an attraction to psychology via James Roland Angel and worked under his supervision. This is Roland Angel. He also studied biology and physiology. In 1903, a lot happened in Watson's personal life. Watson eventually developed anxiety attacks, grisly fear of the dark, and periods of intense depression. During this year, he also received his PhD at age 25, being the youngest person in the University of Chicago ever to earn a doctoral degree. Watson also ended up marrying one of his students, Mary Ix, and had two of her kids. They named them Mary, also known as Polly, and John. Watson subjected his own children to a harsh upbringing regimen. He scheduled feeding and no food. He scheduled feeding and no physical affection. Polly made multiple suicide attempts later in life and John took after his father and died in his early 50s from bleeding ulcers. The marriage was also not a happy one and ended in a huge scandal. They divorced after he started having affairs with one of his students, which hmm, sounds familiar. 
Around this time, Watson also began to think more seriously about a more objective, objective psychology, and behaviorism was officially launched. In 1908, Watson left Chicago to take up a full professorship at John Hopkins University in Baltimore. Following up to behaviorism's introduction to the world was Watson's now famous article, Psychology as the Behaviorist Views It, published by the Psychological Review in 1913. Watson described his approach as the idea that observable behavior is all that is required to understand the psychology of a person or an animal. It focused not on the internal, emotional, and psychological conditions of people, but instead on their external. Watson believed in nurture over nature. The central focus of Watson's new approach was to make psychology actually useful. He believed that unless psychology produced actual value, it would never be truly accepted by the scientific community. He first put his theories to test with the business world during the time America went to war. Watson developed aptitude tests in order to select candidates from the enlisted men for officer training for the U.S. Um, Army. Watson was 42 years old when 19-year-old Rosalie came to study at John Hopkins. This was the beginning of one of Watson's many affairs. Rosalie was also Watson's assistant. In 1920, Watson published one of the most famous research studies done. He attempted and succeeded in conditioning a severe emotional response in a nine-month-old baby. His name was Little Albert. Basically, he determined that white furry objects did not bother the baby. He then paired the neutral stimulus when, with an unconditional stimulus that then created fear in the baby. This in turn created a new stimulus response and when Albert saw any white furry objects, he would get scared after associating them with a negative effect. Hence this. Mary, Watson's wife got a hold of several love letters from Rosalie's bedroom from her husband. In 1920, Mary divorced her husband and won custody of their two kids. The scandal was the end of, the universe, of his university career, and the faculty dismissed Watson and forced him to resign. He then married Rosalie, and they also had two sons, Billy and Jimmy. Watson often used his sons for his studies. Billy rebelled against his father's behaviorism and successfully became a Freudian, Freudian psychiatrist. Eventually, Billy also attempted suicide and killed himself the second time. Jimmy suffered chronic stomach problems for years. Hmm, also sounds like little John's case, except Jimmy managed to do well in life after intensive care. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. Watson's daughter, Mary, also had a daughter who became an alcoholic and had suicidal thoughts. This developed after she and her mother heard a gunshot while eating breakfast. Her father took his own life in a long period of depression. In 1930, Watson was recognized as one of the most important commercial psychologists in America. Watson also proposed a regulatory, regulatory rather than a permissive system of child rearing. He argued that the mother, modern family was totally 
unsuited for the purpose of raising children, and he spoke admirably of the practice of child labor. Watson was also a misogynist and said women were unfit for the workplace. In 1935, Rosalie died, and his sons James and his son James mentioned that this was the only time he saw John Watson cry. For a brief moment, Watson hugged his sons, the only affection he's ever shown them. <laughs> Afterward, he kept an emotional distance from his son from his sons and led and this led to estrangement as they grew up. Watson became an alcoholic again. I lost everything, everything I ever had, especially the only person I cared about, my wife. That's not enough. Give me some more alcohol, all the alcohol. In 1945, he retired from advertising and moved to Connecticut where he lived a lived like a hermit and isolated himself from the world. A year before his death, he was invited to accept an award in the New York in New York by the APA for his contribution contributions to psychology. He went but backed down and sent his son instead due to fear of breaking down in front of the public. Before Watson died, he burned all of his unpublished, unpublished works, letters, manuscripts, and notes after William committed suicide. Watson died in New York at 80 years old on September 25, 1958. Although Watson made a major contribution to psychology, his life was full of unfortunate events. It seemed like a lot of those events were a result of his own fault, either directly or indirectly. Watson proposed an extreme objectivity. However, many psychologists believe that Watson's program omitted important components such as the sensory and perceptual processes. Hmm. And that's Watson for you.